Hey everyone, this is Charles. Welcome back to the channel. This week I have another hands-on practice lab for you, this time looking at a site-to-site -site VPN tunnel. Just like last week's video, I've included a packet tracer download so that you can grab that lab, you can try that out on your own, and then you can watch the rest of the video to see the solution to that configuration. Let's jump in and take a look. In this lab, we're going to set up a site-to-site -site VPN connection between routers 1 and 2. We'll need to put an appropriate configuration on both of these routers in order to establish the tunnel. Many of the tasks here will need to be performed on both ends of that tunnel. First, you need to create an access list to identify interesting traffic that needs to be passed over the VPN. This should identify traffic originating from the local router as the source and the remote router as the destination on the other end of the tunnel. Next, we want to configure the Phase 1 ISA account policy. If you're familiar with the Hegel mnemonic, that tells us all of the parameters that we need to configure, which are hashing, authentication, group, lifetime, and encryption. I want you to set the hash to SHA authentication, to pre-share, group to 5, lifetime to 24 hours, and encryption to AES-256. You'll then need to create an ISA camp key pointing to the remote peer's IP address, and then configure phase two. You'll need to create a transform set as well. In this set, define the AES encryption method with a 256-bit key and use the MD5 hashing authentication algorithm. Then you'll configure the phase two transform set. Configure the crypto map with sequence number 10. In this map, set the remote peer IP as the IP address of the remote router and match interesting traffic to the ACL that was previously created. Then create and name the transform set, linking it to the crypto map configuration. Finally, you'll apply the crypto map to the outgoing interface on the router. You'll need to repeat this process on both ends of the tunnel, making the appropriate changes for the IP addressing where necessary. So again, as I mentioned, you can download the Packet Tracer topology file in the video description. So feel free to grab that and give this a try on your own. And once you've completed the configuration and the verification, then you can resume the video and see the solution here as I configure that. Or if you don't want to download that yourself, feel free to stick around and watch as I configure this site-to-site -site VPN tunnel. Let's start by creating an ACL for identifying interesting traffic that will go out over the VPN. I'll say IP access hyphen list. I'll make this an extended ACL and I'll name it VPN hyphen traffic. I'll add a single statement starting with permit and I'll use the option IP to allow all types of traffic. And I'll indicate the source as the local subnet for PC1, which is 10.1.1.0 with a 24 bit wildcard mask. And the destination will be PC2's local subnet at 10.1.2.0 slash 24. Now we're ready to create our phase one ISA Kemp policy. To do that, we say crypto ISA Kemp policy. We can create multiple policies with different configurations. In this case, I'll make this five. Now we need to configure our Hegel metrics. If we look at context sensitive help, we can see all of these available. Hegel, again, that stands for hash, authentication, group, lifetime and encryption. That's an easy way to remember all of the metrics that we need to configure. So let's say hash and context sensitive help indicates we can use MD5 or SHA. Of course, we want to use SHA because that is more secure. Next is authentication. And we want to choose the pre-share option, which is the only option available here. Now for group, you can see we can use one, two or five as our Diffie-Hellman group. The higher the group number, the higher the modulus is in regard to the number of bits. So larger group numbers mean that we have more security. Let's choose group five here. Now for lifetime, you can see that ranges from 60 seconds all the way up to 86,400 seconds, which is 24 hours. We want to set that to 24 hours as our lab instructions indicated. So let's say 86,400 for this value. And finally for encryption. We can choose DES, triple DES, or AES. Of course, AES is the most secure and preferred option of those. Let's exit and let's set the ISACAMP key by saying crypto ISACAMP key. I'll make that Cisco123, followed by the address of the remote router 
by saying address and router2 is at 10.1.20.1. Now we're ready to move to phase two configuration, the IPsec transform set. Let's start by saying crypto, and instead of isocamp, which is phase one, this time we want to say phase two, IPsec. Now we want to say transform hyphen set, and we want to give that a name, and I'm going to make that VPN hyphen set. Now we want to set the cipher and authentication algorithms. So first let's say ESP hyphen AES for the cipher, and options indicate the key size. I'm going to choose 256. Help again indicates the options for authentication, which I'll set to ESP hyphen SHA hyphen HMAC. Now let's configure the crypto map that we're going to apply to the outgoing interface. We do that by saying crypto map, and I'll name that VPN hyphen map. Again, you can have multiple sequence numbers. I'll make this one sequence number 10, and our only option is IPsec hyphen isocamp. Now we need to set the remote peer IP address, which will be that of router two. So we'll say set peer 10.1.20.1. Now we want to link the previously created transform set to this crypto map configuration. We can say set transform hyphen set, and the name of that was VPN hyphen set. We need to match interesting traffic from our access control list that we created. So let's say match address, and the name of that ACL was VPN hyphen traffic. Finally, we need to apply the crypto map to the outgoing interface for this router. You can see that the interface being used is serial zero slash zero slash zero. Let's go under interface serial zero slash zero slash zero, and let's say crypto map. The name of that map is VPN hyphen map. We do get a message stating that Isocamp is on, so that's a good sign, and that completes our setup on router one. Now let's jump over to router two, and let's do the same thing. I will go through that a bit faster this time because we're essentially performing the same process, so we'll create an ACL. IP access hyphen list, extended VPN hyphen traffic will permit traffic from the local PC's subnet to the remote PC subnet by saying permit IP 10.1.2.0, 24-bit wildcard mask, 10.1.1.0, and another 24-bit wildcard mask. Now our isocamp policy, crypto isocamp policy five hash SHA, authentication, pre-share, group five, lifetime, 86,400, encryption, AES. We'll create the same key, Cisco123, this time pointing to router one at 10.1.10.0. We'll say crypto, isocamp, key, Cisco123, address 10.1.10.1. Now for the transform set, crypto IPsec transform hyphen set, VPN hyphen set is the name of that, ESP hyphen AES 256, and ESP hyphen SHA hyphen HMAC. Now for the crypto map, crypto map VPN hyphen map 10 IPsec hyphen isocamp. This time we'll set the peer to router one. So we'll say set peer, 10.1.10.1, set transform hyphen set, the name is VPN hyphen set, and we want to match address using VPN hyphen traffic. And again, the outgoing interface on this side is serial zero slash zero slash zero, so we can apply the crypto map to that interface. Let's go under interface serial zero slash zero slash zero, and let's say crypto map and the name of that is VPN hyphen map. So that completes our full setup. Let's exit and let's run the command show crypto IPsec SA. And as you can see, no packets have been encrypted or encapsulated. So that means no traffic has gone over our VPN tunnel just yet. In order to see some traffic, let's go ahead and just ping across our tunnel in order to establish the VPN with interesting traffic. So from PC1, let's ping PC2 at 10.1.2.10, 10. 
after a couple of failures, we will eventually succeed in pinging the remote router, and we see that happen here. Now let's again say show crypto IPsec SA. And you can see that now we do have packets listed here, so our traffic is flowing over the VPN tunnel now. That's all for now. If you'd like to support this channel, please consider subscribing, leaving a comment, or sharing this video with someone you think may enjoy it. That's the best way you can support what I'm doing. If you'd like to support the content I'm creating even more, please consider checking out the membership links found in the video description. I hope you found this content useful, and I want to thank you sincerely for watching.